In today's video, I am going to remove the exhaust manifold on this vehicle and have a look at it. The exhaust system on this vehicle is good, but there is a leak in the manifold. I'm going to turn on the vehicle and you will be able to hear how loud it is. Give it a little shot of gas. It's just idling now. Hopefully that's coming out in the video. It is very loud. To get some perspective, I've moved back a bit. There's our engine, the exhaust manifold. In the case of this vehicle, which is a 2005 Toyota Echo, this is my son's car. Move the light over here. Exhaust manifold is back here. And there's the heat shield. We got a couple of bolts we gotta move there. We can see one of them is actually, huh, I see that's rusted off there. Anyways, we'll have to remove that. And this is a great time if you have a manual for your vehicle, as my son does, to get it out and reference the procedure. And also, before I forget, this is something you do when your vehicle has cooled off. Like, you don't want the engine hot. You don't want to go around it at all. I've sprayed penetrating oil on the bolts up here on the shield. And I'm going to go under the vehicle and spray the penetrating oil on any bolts that we're going to be working on down there also of what's coming out on the screen. So here's where the two bolts for the heat shield were. They both, both broke off. Down here is the end of our manifold. And this bolt here and over here on the other side are the two bolts that I will have to remove to disengage the exhaust system which hopefully you can see is right there um, my guess is that these bolts are probably going to break also I soaked them in penetrating oil and uh, I don't know if you can see it the threads are really rusted up and corroded there and the, the thing with an exhaust system is there's such extreme heat this is not a common problem or this is a common issue I should say so uh, well I have that. I'm going to try to show you the manifold. I got a mirror here. And uh, I'll cut this part out if it doesn't come out. Um, there's the, the uh, manifold connected to the engine block. And you can see the bolts there also. Um, uh, hopefully that's coming out and the you can see the manifold see it's it, it's rusted around uh, one of the one of the pipes there so this is what we're up against anyway I'll take it from there when you're doing a job like this where it's a very cramped space I'll do whatever I can to give a little extra edge. I removed the plastic cover off the top of the engine. Didn't give me a lot of more room, but maybe half an inch. And that's going to be pretty tight back there. Now the instruction manual advises removing the bolts between the end of the manifold and the exhaust system first. Whenever I do something like this, I loosen off whatever bolts I think are going to be the ones that are most likely to give me a problem which in this case are going to be the bolts and the nuts that connect the manifold to the engine block. Because if I start to loosen them off and I can't get them, well, the job's over. In, in an instance like this, you can just continue to drive the vehicle, you know, if, if it's not too bad until the, the inspection is up and an older car like this, well, it's end of life, right? So anyways, we're going to loosen these bolts and nuts off here first and because they're so rusted and so tight what you want to do 
is when you're on that bolt or nut, because there's bolts and nuts along there, I always just start to ease the pressure on. You know, you're like you're, you're going counterclockwise, lefty loosey, and it's going to be tight, right? So you just some people just come on to that, right? You just kind of start easing the pressure because you don't want to bust those bolts. This is a good time to get out whatever assortment of different ratchets and sockets that you're going to need in the case of this car it's 12 millimeter bolts and nuts connecting that manifold uh, it, because you might need it, it's tight to get at right so maybe you know you might take your socket and you can get it on you know just like that get in around the pipes more likely you're gonna need an extension you might need a different size extension like say a longer one like that so whatever you got in your tickle trunk you know use them and and you'll be able to maneuver around there ideally you will have a ratchet with a pivoting head where is mine anyways that's it's got the pivot on it so get your stuff out get ready always good to have a wire brush ready you're gonna in if you're like me you're gonna have to use a mirror to look at the the bolt and then get your socket placed and maybe then put your uh, accessories on there so that was a miserable and tedious job but I got them all out we can see one there um, not sure if I can show you another one I did the only problem I had I stripped the head on one of these bolts and now I'm going to show you the tool I used to get that bolt out Here is the bolt that got stripped. And here is the 12 millimeter socket that fit on it. Now, as you can see, I can move that socket a lot. That's because it was seized so bad that it actually stripped. Couldn't get a grip on it. Anyway, this is how I got it out. This is an extractor kit. I got this years ago. It was relatively expensive. I think it was like 40 bucks. But, I've only used it a couple times, but it's got me out of some binds. So, here's what you do. Is you take the extractor, this is a 12 millimeter one. See, it's marked there. Put it on the offending bolt, like this. And what it'll do is, as you turn it, and again, don't, you know, just ease onto this with the pressure, because you don't want to strip it worse, but it will bite in see those hopefully this one see the cu the cutting edges there so put it on like that uh, then well you got this units here but the way I used it take a socket of the proper size to fit over this which what is this three quarters and then obviously put the ratchet on it which is here like so and then you ease onto it, going counterclockwise, obviously, and remove it like that. Incidentally, I have a uh, video on that particular socket set. So, socket set. I will uh, put a link down below the video. Anyway, that's how I got that bolt out of there. I'm looking down at the bolts I have to remove that connect the exhaust system to the manifold you see that bolt I put on there I was able to get that on from up above and that's a 17 millimeter in this case now I'm gonna to try to get a shot from down below but I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do that so I'm gonna go down again prepared with an extension and another smaller extension that I have and the proper big ratchet Well, I'm definitely not going to be able to record this. I'm underneath the vehicle here. Anyway, there's our socket. And here's my extension. I'll put that on and remove it. The exhaust bolts to the manifold are removed. And you can see I can jiggle that exhaust 
around. Here are the bolts. I don't intend on reusing them unless I really have to. I don't suspect they'll be hard to get, but uh, you can see they're pretty corroded. I went to disconnect the bolt that mounts the, the uh, manifold to the bracket, which is right there. Luckily, I was able to do this from up above. And as I uh, started to remove it, the manifold released from the block, so I don't have to pry that out. Just thought I'd give you a, a quick shot of that. Here's the old manifold. I was hoping to be able to weld that and repair it. I think you can see that is not going to happen. And uh, another thing we have to do here is remove the gasket, which be hanging. Where's my mirror? One moment. There it is. See that hanging there? Uh, where's that gasket? There it is. Okay, it's caught on one. There we go. Get that out of there as well. And I'll be getting a new one of them also. It's a week later. My new manifold has finally arrived. Here's the... Uh, Receipt, the manifold itself was $250. This is Canadian, uh, early November 2021. $25 freight, $7.98 for the spring bolt kit. So we, we're gonna use the new springs as we talked about. Uh, throw in our government uh, robbing us blind here in Canada, $42.45 tax. And the total is $325.43. This is a... 2005 Toyota Echo, if I, did not, if I didn't mention that before. Let's have a little look. Oh, look at this. It came with the bolts. Okay, it's bonus. I'll return those and get that $9 back, whatever it is. Okay, there's our gasket. And the manifold. There's our ring that goes between the manifold and the exhaust. Okay, here it is. Take a small wire brush, something you can get in around where the manifold connects to the block and clean all that old crud from the old gasket off as much as you can. And take a good solvent then afterwards. I soaked a rag in solvent and then cleaned that all up so that the gasket, our new gasket, will uh, make a, a good, uh, have a good... The two um, outermost bolts, obviously our gasket is in there. Um, I'm going to move this a little bit so you can see. So I'm going to tighten that up. I have underneath of the vehicle I put a, a very uh, bungee cord and forced the the exhaust that way to give me some more room to, to work on this manifold. So with the manifold hanging with the two outer bolts as I mentioned in place I have now got the other three bolts uh, finger tight and I'm going to uh, tighten those up now with the uh, ratchet. I'm going to slide the donut ring onto the end of the exhaust manifold from up above. May have to adjust that down below. Once the manifold was in place I put the bolt back into the bracket so that secured the manifold. And then I tightened up our bolts on the manifold a little bit. I left them just a little bit loose in case it had to move around the bracket. Anyway, once it was secured, 
to the engine block and to the bracket. As you can see, I put the exhaust into place, move that up there, put my two bolts in. This was a bit of a job. I lost one of the nuts. You can see here, probably one of the nuts is different. And uh, I had to go get another one. And then what you want to do here is, is tighten one side, then tighten the other, and go back and forth like that. And that way the exhaust pipe will move into place with the manifold and seat properly. Uh, after I was done that, I checked and there was a little bit of exhaust leak right in around there. I took a bar, a big screwdriver actually, with the engine off, don't do this with the engine running, and I pried in between there and just made sure that it, it seemed to seat a little bit, you could kind of feel a seat, and I tightened those bolts a little bit, and uh, that was it. I'm going to turn the car on now so you can hear the results. So that's basically the end of this video. I'm not going to bother to make you watch while I put the engine cover back on. Obviously, that's just the reverse. Uh, I will uh, quickly just go out and uh, we'll just have a quick look at the manifold. You can see where, where it all links up. Don't do this at home. I don't want you in around a running engine on my account. Anyway, I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching.